I've headed out to <clears throat> another new location to me and I'm just trying to remember where I went. I came out and did a quick scout round here a couple of weekends ago just to see if it was going to be one of those locations that I could do something with. I'm not sure which path it was that I took. I think it might have been this one. I found a couple of spots which I thought could be workable. I say bluebells and woodlands, not my usual genre. But we're going to have a go. Why not? I thought we needed a break from the, uh, from the coast. <laughs> if this video doesn't turn out, then I'll be showing you one from the coast. Right, I'm going to carry on wandering, and as soon as I find my first spot, we'll have a chat. Well, I didn't have to wander very far before I found this beautiful clump of whatever these plants are. And as I say, I think they're anemones. But with this mass, what I thought could work quite nicely is focusing in on an individual one with a wide aperture so I'm, I've set it at f4 I'm on the 17 to 55 lens the f2.8 and that throws the rest of the the mound of flowers out of focus and the woodland out of focus but it keeps enough focus so that you get some context of where these are so we're going to have a little go I'm not bothering with the tripod at f4, I'm getting 1 60th, 1 80th of a second, which is fine handheld. I'm only at a focal length of oh, about 38. So I'm going to find one that I quite like the look of, and I think I'm going to go for this one. There's a, there's a couple of little marks on it, but I can't do a lot about that. Such is nature. I'm going to see what we can do. I might even zoom out a little bit. Now I'm still showing the horizon and now I've made my eyes go all squiffy yeah that's nicely in focus I'm getting some of the sky in through the tops of the trees and I've got a rather nice one here that's got a little bit of colour in it it's going over slightly but we'll have a go at this one These strange positions to get into and wake my camera up Straighten the horizon up. Yeah, I think that actually works. It's a lovely depth of um, depth of view on it. And as I say, there's enough you can see enough of the background to know that actually we are in a woodland. I'm not sure uh, it might work in landscape orientation. It doesn't seem to. No, I'm not so keen on it in landscape. The bit of sky that I am getting in is most definitely blown smithereens, but I'm really not concerned about it. Yeah, it might even work with a wide angle lens on. I might have a go at that. Just for a giggle, I thought I'd put the wide angle on. 10 to 20. And for a moment, I didn't think it was going to autofocus. And I rely on autofocus partly because my eyes are so pants but also because manufacturers spend fortunes putting focus systems in these damn things why make life difficult for yourself I'm still not using the tripod but what I'm trying to do is get a close-up on this so this kind of fills the frame and then I've just got a swathe of white in the background I'm still shooting at I'm shooting at f.5.6 now and I'm shooting on aperture priority to make life really simple so I'm getting down into a very unladylike position trying not to crush any of the flowers I've focused on the stamens at one one hundredth of a second and I quite like that there's vignetting on it which I think adds to the image and then it's just greens and whites and the soft yellows of the stamen on that particular little flower. I think that really works well. As I say, I'm no expert on woodland. 
slight movement to the side, just a slight change of viewpoint, to get in as close as I can. There comes a point where this won't focus because it's not intended to focus this close up. So it's definitely worth spending your time at a spot and having a wander around in all directions. I'm getting different light effects. Here, I'm shooting into the light. So I'm getting quite a dark, moody image. Shooting from the other side, I'm getting, I'm shooting away from the light. So it's a lot, excuse me, a lot brighter. I'm trying to find a gap that I can put my size sixes down in and not crush anything. And it's just, little movements. Oh, I'm keeping your hair out your way so you can see what you're doing. Ooh. Yeah, this one here, I just can't get quite far enough around to put it either central or the left hand side of the, the frame. I'm really conscious that I'm trying not to crush the rest of the flowers around it, so we'll have another go. Not the most ladylike position, I must confess. I think that's better. Oh, that's more like what I was after. I, I had no intention of staying here for an hour <laughs> or half three quarters of an hour, but it's been good fun just working this little area and seeing what I can get, and especially trying out a lens I didn't think would work. The more I play with this camera, the more I'm starting to like it. Still got the 70 to 200 on. I've switched everything into manual focus. My peaking highlights or focus peaking, whatever they want to call it in Nikon world, has come on. And is actually working a treat. And the really good thing I found is I can zoom in to the image and then I can go to the eyepiece, the view the electronic viewfinder. And I can review the image through there to confirm that it's actually sharp. And by George, that is a game changer. I hadn't realised that. That's a proper game changer. What I find with shooting at a very small, very wide aperture, so f2.8, it's not always possible to get every part of that flower in, in focus. And because I've got my glasses on, when I'm looking at the LCD, I'm not seeing that everything's focused. By viewing through the viewfinder, oh, a proper game changer that. And I'm sure all you people who shoot mirrorless are going, Tch, did she not know that? Well, no, I didn't because it's all new to me. I am still really frustrated that I can't get the self timer to work. So that's going to be a, have a look through the manual when I get home. Um, but for now, it's just a case of lining up images where I can see or I can isolate a specific bluebell, which when you're shooting at f2.8 isn't the easiest of things to focus on. There we go. Well, I've been getting completely carried away here. <laughs> oh, I 
it's been great. It's around about quarter to 10 and I've been out since five o'clock. Sunrise was a bust in the direction I needed it, but hey ho. But this has been absolutely fabulous. And I have learned an awful lot about the camera, which as I say, I'm beginning to fall in love with a little bit more. Shooting woodland isn't easy. People like Baxter, Mr. Baxter, and to a degree, Tom Heaton, make it look really simple, but it's not. I'm just gonna have to undo my jacket a bit, honestly. Oh, it's wonderful. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for coming along. I hope you like the images. A little bit different from seascapes, a lot slower than seascapes. There's been a lot of walking around, getting the camera down low, getting the camera up high, zooming in, zooming out to try and get the, the final image that I was after. And I think I succeeded. And as I say, the fact I can zoom in and see the image I've taken magnified through the viewfinder makes my life so much easier. I can't get on with wearing glasses when I'm doing the photography. It's great for looking at the rear screen, but then I have to take them off to look through the LCD. <laughs> Bizarre. But hey, that's just me. So yes, thank you for coming along. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you next Sunday. Bye for now.